Hello everyone and for the past few months I've been teaching a letter to a friend by Nagarjuna to some of Rambuchi's disciple. So to read the te uh, text, so we had reached uh, quite uh, at the end of the book and then like around almost at the end we have like these three stanzas Marip Pale Lede Tele Nam Shete Mintan Son Rapju Tele Ketche Tuk De Tele Repa Kundi Chung Api Son Repa Lene Sorwa Kunjong Sorwa Shete Seba Chung Wark Sele Lemba Kewa Kyuba Tele Siba Sile Kewa Lam Kewa Yuna Nyanyen Nakada Tebe Kanta Chiwe Jikso Tungal Pungbo Shindu Chie Chung Kewa Kao Pe Tikun Kao Pa Kyu so here we have like three stanzas and or three paragraphs and uh, what we are talking here is we are talking about the 12 links or you can also say the 12 Buddhist wheel of life or we can also say 12 links of interdependence or 12 links of arising or 12 links of origin and all this uh, can be translated as uh, for the CP code law. And uh, since uh, uh, we had already gone through this uh, the last time, but uh, I was asked to maybe we can make a video of it uh, since we are talking about the 12 links. And it seems like it is quite important to have some idea or to maybe understand a little about these 12 links and that is why we are going to go through these uh, 12 links and uh, according to the text so the first one and before that um, what happens is normally when we go to a temple especially like Tibetan Buddhist temple and when you go to the temple and then Normally, like uh, just next to the main gate uh, where you can enter the shrine hall, you will see a picture of uh, the six realms. And around that, you can see the 12 links. And you have to know that uh, this is like written in almost every uh, monastery or temple. And uh, this uh, drawing was specially recommended by the Buddha himself. And during the time of the Buddha, uh, in the central part of India, there was this king, Bibhimsara, and he received a small gift from one of the other kings uh, from India back then. And from uh, the king of Uddiyana sent a small gift to the king, Bibhimsara. And then as it is custom, so when we receive something, normally we tend to give something back uh, to the person who gave us something. And so the king asked uh, the Buddha, what should I send it back? And then the Buddha told him that, oh, you should uh, make a picture or a drawing of these two links and also the six realms. And so the Buddha instructed, and then they made the drawing. And from then, the existence of this uh, painting or art or drawing came uh, to birth. So because of that, from then, so it has uh, been carried on till now. And whenever you go to a monastery or whenever you go to a Buddhist temple, you can always see that to remind you of all this. And then after that, um, so we will go according to the drawing that we can see. And for now, today, uh, what we have is, I've taken the drawing from our monastery here in Namabuddha. So when you uh, come to our temple here in Namabuddha, then you will be able to see this. And this is the drawing that you are going to see. And this is the 12 links. 
and from here uh, uh, what we can see is we can see like few circles there's the first circle here and then there's the second circle and then there's the third circle and then there's the fourth circle so you will be able to see like four circles here and uh, before going this again for samsara in Tibetan we say korwa korwa means to circle or to rotate like that and uh, who is uh, circling or uh, uh, who is rotating then if you ask that then the sentient beings who are in the samsara are circling in the samsara and why are they circling they are circling because of the karma uh, that they have uh, uh, caused in their previous life and also in this life and uh, yeah, so we are going through that and uh, from these travelings, the first one, uh, we will go through that and uh, the first one is Maripa or Ignorance and uh, before going into Ignorance, uh, again, uh, we will talk with the uh, first circle one uh, in the image and you can see like uh, this one, so I hope you will be able to see so right in the middle of the picture you will see like three animals here you will see a pig you will see a rooster and then you will see a snake and sometimes you uh, you will see like this but sometimes you will see the pig and the pig is biting the rooster and also the snake but sometimes it is like this and both of them are correct i guess and the main reason for this uh, circle is that when we are in the samsara or when we are uh, inside the samsara the main reason of being in the samsara is because of our ignorance and the main uh, reason is ignorance and the pig uh, represents ignorance so when you see the pig in the diagram you have to remember that oh, it represents ignorance and from ignorance what happens is uh, when we see something that we like or when we see something that is beautiful then what happens is we get attachment and attachment is represented by the rooster that we can see here so uh, from ignorance comes uh, the attachment and again from attachment sometimes what happens is we see something that is not pleasant or something that is not beautiful something that makes us angry and for that, what we have is we get angry, we get jealous like that. And the anger is represented by the snake. So these three are the main cause of us being in the samsara. So when we see this diagram, so right in the middle, when you see the pig, when you see the snake, and when you see the rooster, you have to know that these are the cause of us being in the samsara. So that describes the first cycle. And then after that, you uh, we go into the second circle. So second circle, you can see some people walking or maybe flying uh, upwards. And this is represented by like white background. And then the other half is some of the people are falling down or they are going down and they have like a black background. And this represents that when we uh, do something meritorious or uh, then what happens is we uh, gain merit and then when we gain merit is we go upwards and upwards represents uh, the higher realms of the six realms and this is uh, when we commit like some sins when we commit uh, uh, something from our attachment or from our ignorance or from our jealousy pride like that then what happens is we go or we are born into the lower realms of samsara so we will be born in hell realm we will be born in hungry ghost realm like that and uh, the black background sub, uh, represents the sins and the white uh, background represents uh, merit so that is describing about the second circle and then after that uh, comes the third circle so third circle i don't think we have to go through so much because third circle uh, we see the six realms so i'm pretty sure most of you know about uh, the six realms so you know about the heaven you know about the demigod realm 
you know about the human realm, you know about the animal realm, and hungry ghost realm, and hell realm. So these six realms, I think, it is quite easy to understand. So when we do something meritorious or when we do something uh, positive, then we will be born in the three upper realm. And then when we do something negative or from our negative emotions, then we will be born in the lower realm. And then uh, after the third circle, then comes the fourth circle. And here in this fourth, uh, fourth circle, we have uh, 12 separate diagrams. And this represents the 12 links. And uh, from the 12 links, the first one is ignorance or maripa. So this is like around, uh, I think, maybe between 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock here in our picture. But normally, sometimes you will see it between 12 to 1 o'clock. So the first one is, uh, it looks like this one. So normally in the picture, what you can see is this old man who is blind and uh, he is holding a cane to walk because he cannot see and what does this represent this represents ignorance and how does this represent ignorance and just like a blind person so even if he wants to go to a place which is very beautiful or which is very useful or which is very wonderful but since he is blind uh, he is not able to go there directly uh, so it is very difficult for him to be there or go there or arrive there if we have eyes that can see then it might be easier but when we are blind and we want to go somewhere then it is almost impossible to reach up there and even if you want to go somewhere then it is very very difficult and just like that uh, ignorance and uh, because of the ignorance we cannot see and even if we want to be born in Tushita heaven, or even if we want to be born in a higher realm, or even if we want to be born in Amitabha land, but because of our ignorance, and even if we want, but our ignorance blinds our sight, so we are not able to get there. And this uh, picture, the first picture represents that ignorance. And then comes the second uh, uh, image. So the second image is like this. So you can see someone making pot or make be like vessels. So what this represents is this represents formation. So because of our ignorance, we will be uh, uh, committing or we will be committing some karma. And uh, sometimes because of the karma, we commit good karma. Sometimes we commit bad karma. Sometimes we commit neutral karma. And just like that, uh, this, uh, the person who is making the pot, so it depends on him. So sometimes uh, the person who is making the pot, he will make a very beautiful pot. Sometimes he will make pot that are not so beautiful. Sometimes he will make pots that are very big. Sometimes he will make pots that are very small, tiny, like that. And there will be all different kinds of pots that he is uh, able to make. And just like that, um, uh, we are also uh, born because of the ignorance. So sometimes we will be born in the upper realm, sometimes we will be born in the lower realm, sometimes we will have a very good life, sometimes we will have a very bad life, and it all depends on our ignorance. And uh, because of our ignorance, when we commit karma, and if we commit good karma, we have a very beautiful pot or a very beautiful life. And sometimes uh, when we commit bad karma, then what happens is we are born as uh, something that is not pleasant and where we, our life is filled with unhappiness uh, and all this. And this is represented by this uh, person who is making the clay pot. And then after the uh, formation, uh, the second one, comes the third one. And the third one is consciousness. And consciousness is represented by a monkey here. So you will be able to see this. So there is going to be a monkey who is uh, maybe like running around. So you are going to see this. So there is the monkey here. And what does this represent? And our consciousness is just like the monkey. And when you 
especially when you are here in Nepal, when you go to monkey temple, you will see lots of monkeys over there. And what happens is a monkey, they don't uh, stay still for a long time. So sometimes they will be on this tree, sometimes they will be on that tree. They will be always moving around and around and around. And just like that, our consciousness is also like that. It is very uh, difficult to stay still. So our consciousness will move around and around and it cannot stay still. It will always be moving around. And that consciousness is uh, depicted by this monkey here uh, in the image. And after that comes the fourth one. Uh, so the fourth one is name and form. So um, here uh, you will see uh, two person, uh, uh, how to say, uh, in a boat. So you can see uh, this is like a river or maybe a lake and then there are two person who are in the boat. And what does this represent? So this represents uh, the fourth one, name and form. And normally what happens is, <clears throat> uh, because of the consciousness, and when we take birth, and uh, we need to know that there is always going to be the parto in between. So just like when we watch TV, when we move from one channel to another channel, so sometimes it feels like uh, it just moves from the first channel to the second channel. But actually it is not like that. Uh, there is like a split moment in between the first channel and second channel. So there is like a small gap in between these two. And just like that, uh, when we are taking rebirth, so when we are taking rebirth from this life to another life, uh, it doesn't go directly to another life. There is going to be like a small gap. And that is uh, called a parto. And we have to cross that to reach uh, into our next life. And just like uh, when you are going from one place to another place, and there is a lake or maybe a river or, or a stream like that, what you need to have is you need to have a boat to go from this place to the another place. And that is represented by this picture. So this one is the fourth one. So now we have already gone uh, the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, and then come the fifth one. So fifth one is sense faculties. So here again, what you are going to see is you are going to see an image of an empty building. So sometimes it will be just be like a building. Sometimes it will be a monastery. Sometimes it might be a te temple. So whatever. But the house is empty. There is nobody inside. And this is represented by the uh, sense faculties. And when you are uh, um, in the womb, uh, you already have the embryos, but what happens is you still don't have the consciousness. You have your eye organ, you have your nose organ and mouth organ like that, but there is no consciousness and uh, it is not so much of use uh, even though you have the organs. And just like that, uh, this empty temple or the empty building or the empty monastery represents that uh, when there is nobody living in the house, then the house is of not so much of importance. And this uh, represents uh, the fifth one. And then comes the sixth one, is uh, contact or rekpa. And here is the coming together of the object and the sense faculty and the consciousness. And this is represented by two people hugging here. So sometimes you will be able to see like two people hugging or sometimes you will be able to see like two people kissing like that and uh, whenever you see the picture then uh, you are going to see this. So depending on the painter so it might vary but the main uh, reason is uh, uh, that is set here is contact. So there is going to be the contact of the object and the sense faculty and your consciousness. So you are going to feel that. And what happens when you get into contact? Then you will feel like a sensation. So that is uh, the seventh one. So here, the sensation. So here what is shown is a person is being hit by an arrow. So it, uh, his uh, forehead or maybe his eyes is pierced by an arrow. 
and uh, after the uh, contact so if there is like a pleasant contact then what happens is you have a very pleasant sensation if it is uh, a not so pleasant contact then what happens is you have a very unpleasant uh, sensation so uh, there is going to be pleasurable painful and neutral uh, sensation and these are all coming from uh, contact and uh, when you have sensation you only uh, feel that so now here it is represented by the arrow being hit in your eyes and when you, uh, an arrow hits your eyes then you are in so much pain you only feel the pain you don't feel anything else and just like that uh, this represents or depicts the sensation and then after that uh, it is uh, craving so here it is being shown by uh, someone offering alcohol or maybe wine so there's a lady offering wine to a merchant or maybe a landlord or whoever so this is like a craving and just like uh, when we crave and then we do uh, so many things uh, because of our cra craving and the main craving is ignorance and because of our ignorance we commit so many acts that are negative acts and just like that when we are under the influence of alcohol and even if we want to do something good but uh, because of the influence of the alcohol when you are drunk uh, you are not able to do what you think but the alcohol takes over you and then maybe you will get into a fight or maybe you will fall somewhere or maybe you will uh, argue with someone like that and just like that uh, because of the ignorance uh, or negative emotions uh, maybe sometimes we want to do something good but when the negative emotion is so strong then we are under the influence of negative emotion and then we commit so many bad things uh, we commit so many bad actions and that is represented by this uh, craving and then comes the uh, grasping and after craving uh, what comes is grasping so first we only crave for a little but then uh, the more it is pleasant the more we want that when it is not so good the more we want to get rid of it and that is represented by uh, here someone is plucking oranges or maybe peaches so whatever it is so uh, he already has so many peaches but he is still collecting more and more there is a full um, basket of peach there is full basket of peach and even in his arms they are full of uh, fruits but he is still plucking more and more because he is still grasping and when you have, uh, have too much of craving then you will start to grasp just like when we have like a thousand dollars then we want to have ten thousand dollars then when we have ten thousand then we want to have hundred thousand million like that and uh, just like uh, these days uh, all of us have so many different kinds of cravings sometimes we want to have two bags and then when we have two bags we want to have third one fourth one fifth one so these bags, they are clothes, they are houses, so whatever. And when the craving is so strong, then we start to grasp. And then whatever is so beautiful, whatever is so nice, uh, whatever things that we like, we try to have that more and more and more. And because of that, we fall deeper and deeper into the samsara. And then after that comes becoming. So here it is represented by a male and a female. Uh, sleeping together so sometimes uh, you might see a pregnant lady in the picture so I think uh, both uh, whichever uh, it's okay to uh, draw so this uh, is Sipa or becoming so when the body so when the consciousness goes into the body then uh, it will not be like uh, the one before where the house is empty so now there is a consciousness in the body so this is represented by this so they have uh, this and then after that uh, here comes the 11th one or birth or sometimes it is termed as birth so here you will see an image of a woman giving birth so you are born uh, in this uh, particular place 
depending on the karma that you have committed. So if you have like uh, committed good karma, then you will be born in a higher realm, much better life. If you have committed bad karma, then you will be born in a lower realm like that. So depending on the karma that you have committed, you will be born uh, somewhere. So and we don't have any power or the ability to choose or oh, I'll be born here, I'll be born there, but it will go uh, according to our karma. And then we are born. And then the last one from the 12 links is old age and death. So here you will see someone carrying a corpse. So this is like a dead body or a corpse. So this guy is taking the dead body to the funeral. And what happened is when we are born, so we are going to have lots of suffering. So we will have the suffering of birth, we will be having the suffering of old age, we will have the suffering of sickness, and then we will be having the suffering of death. But sometimes what happens is when you are in the womb, uh, there is possibility of dying. Sometimes when you are a child, there is possibility of dying. So there might not be uh, uh, like uh, old age or maybe... Um, getting sick like that, you will just uh, burn and then you die. So this is represented by this drawing. So when you are born in this samsara, you have to die. And uh, sometimes there are lots of suffering in between, and sometimes there are lots of happiness. But when we check properly, even this happiness, there might be the causes of suffering, because sometimes we think we are enjoying a lot, and especially like when we are having a very good time together with our friends when we are eating with them we think this is very happiness but this might this might be the cause of suffering because there might be food poisoning or maybe when you uh, eat too much uh, you might get sick like that and no matter what we do so sometimes we think that oh we are having a very good time we are having a very enjoyable life but if we check properly maybe that might also be one of the cause of suffering. So here is like a very rough and short description of the 12 links. And then again after that, um, what we can describe is like, um, we can also talk uh, this as according to the four truths. So when we are talking about the four truths, then we have, uh, uh, so the cause of suffering uh, uh, the truth of suffering uh, the truth of the cause of suffering like that so here uh, what we can do is we have the first one the truth of uh, suffering so the truth of suffering uh, is uh, described by this uh, circle the third circle the second circle and the fourth circle so the same diagram that we have uh, been going through so uh, we can talk that oh uh, the second third and fourth so these are all like suffering the truth of suffering whether we are born here 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 or wherever in these 12 links we are always going to suffer so that is the truth of suffering and then the second one, uh, truth of origin. So the truth of origin is represented by the first circle. So this, uh, the pig, the rooster, and the snake. So that is representing uh, the truth of origin. So the attachment, anger, and ignorance. So these are the origin of suffering. And when we have all this ignorance, attachment, and anger, then that will uh, later uh, make us suffer. So this is the suffering and these are the causes of suffering. And then since this is only uh, describing about these two, but sometimes what you will see is you will also see the represent representation of the truth of cessation and the truth of path. So what, uh, how you can see sometimes around here you will see uh, like a picture of a moon a full circle moon. So here we don't have it here in the monastery, but sometimes you can see that. And the full circle of moon represents the truth of cessation. 
and uh, if there is like a half moon then it is mistake so when you get enlightened you are completely filled with wisdom and a full uh, moon represents that so we have to know that uh, the full moon uh, represents or depicts the truth of cessation and then to the left side uh, some uh, you will be able to see like a buddha here but here we don't have that again so sometimes you can see a buddha here and he is pointing it towards the moon so what buddha is saying is if you follow my path then you will reach uh, the enlightenment and the buddha represents the truth of path because he shows the path and uh, behind like that we can also describe this uh, 12 links according to the uh, four truths and then after that uh, you will see this uh, like uh, someone here who is holding this whole universe or world or whatever we say so there's someone who is very furious so the world is inside his mouth and this represents impermanence uh, the god of death so no matter where we are born in this uh, universe if we are born in the heaven realm or maybe human realm or maybe animal realm or maybe ghost realm or wherever we are born so there is always the possibility of dying uh, the, the very next second so just like when an animal goes into the mouth of a lion or maybe a uh, leopard like that so there is very less possibility of coming out alive so just like that we are also already inside the mouth of the god of death so uh, there is no possibility of us coming out alive we are going to die and we have to know that and when we think about it uh, there is always possibility of us dying so maybe tonight or maybe tomorrow or maybe next week or like that but we are going to die so that is like a very small description about the 12 links and this uh, diagram was first started by the buddha himself and along with this diagram uh, the buddha also like uh, wrote a uh, small prayers i guess so it says sambar cha shin yongwa cha sangye ten na chu par cha tambui ke na lang chen shin chida ten ni shu par cha kan shi rap du pai pa chu du di la chu gyu wa ke be ko wa rap ni dongal ta ma che par kyu so that is in tibetan and then in english the first one make effort and cast away so what do we make effort on so we make effort on uh, positive emotions or good things or things that is beneficial for other beings so we uh, try to commit that as much as we can and cast away what do we commit cast away we cast away all the negative emotions or we cast away the attachment we cast away the ignorance and all this we try to cast away so we try to commit uh, good actions and we try to cast away negative actions and then engage in buddha's teaching so whatever is said by the buddha so in short uh, from our body we try to do good things from our speech we try to do good things and from our mind we try to do good things so from our body speech and mind we follow the buddha and we try to do good things uh, we try to think good things we try to do good things and all this stuff and then like an elephant in a house of clay a lot of death uh, should be destroyed and when a house is made of clay then the house is not so strong so if an elephant which is very big and which is very strong and comes to that house and then it hits the house then the house is going to crumble or the house is going to shatter so just like that when we uh, follow uh, the teachings of the buddha then what happens is we are able to destroy the death and we are able to destroy the origin of death so the first one ignorance and we are uh, when we are able to destroy the uh, truth of uh, suffering or the origin of suffering then what happens is then we are able to destroy the uh, to, uh, the last of the 12 things also we are able to destroy the old age and death so uh, that is uh, that 
and then they who with great attentiveness practice the dharma which teams completely abandon the cycle of birth and put on end to all suffering and then when we follow the teachings of the buddha then what happens is uh, we practice his teaching and when we practice his teaching then what happens is we gain the result of enlightenment or buddhahood and then when we reach buddhahood then they will know uh, when we have gotten rid of uh, all this ignorance then we will be not be born in this samsara and when we are born, not born in this in this samsara then we will gain enlightenment or we will never die again so that was uh, a very short description about the diagram or the picture of twelve links and since my english is also not very good so maybe there will be some mistake when i am talking about it so if there was any mistake or if there was any uh, wrong when I was speaking then I'm very sorry for that but uh, if it might also be of some help uh, to some of you and if it was help then uh, I would like to uh, dedicate uh, the merit that we have gained from uh, whatever we have received uh, good merit from me from seeing these things and you from listening these things so we will do our long life prayer for our uh, venerable Changren Buche and then we will do a dedication prayer. Oh, in Tembe Pagyu Kamal Rute Shab Chubya Sambo Yun Deen Ka Gya Abdu Peshen Shab Ta Deen Shituk Tine Chole Nam Gya Palwa Shu Sonam De Tamji Sipa Nye Tome Nibe Talam Babji Kega Nache Palap Tupa Yi Sipi Sole Do Wa Do Wa Shu yeah, okay, thank you.